Welcome to Moments with Mary Ann. I'm so delighted we're spending this time here today. We have a very inspiring show coming right up with special guest, Wendy Wax. And she's here today to share with us her new novel, The Breakup Book Club. Now, breakups, just like book clubs, come in many shapes and sizes and can take us on unexpected journeys. In this entertaining novel, Four women discover what it means to be friends. All from USA Today, best-selling author of 10 Beach Road and My Ex-Best Friend's Wedding. So many of you know Wendy Wax. She's a former broadcaster and is the author of 16 novels and two novellas, including My Ex-Best Friend's Wedding, Best Beach Ever, One Good Thing, Sunshine Beach, A Week at the Lake, and many more. The mother of two grown sons, she has left the suburbs of Atlanta for an in-town high-rise that's eerily similar to the fictional high-rise she created in 2013, the release of While We Were Watching Downtown Abbey. So let's welcome to the show, Wendy Wax. Thank you. It's great to be here. You know, what an honor it is to have you here and to talk about your new book. I know you've written so many other books that are just bestsellers. I have to ask you, you, like, what was the inspiration behind this book? Well, you know, it's so funny. In most cases, you, at least for me, you have an idea for a book, you're thinking about the characters and, you know, everything evolves and, and all of that. And then a title happens. In this case, the title just sort of presented itself first. So I kind of had an idea of where I was going. I wasn't sure how I'd get there because that's how I write in general. But actually, this story started with a title. I just thought it sounded really cool. And I thought, boy, I could, I could, I could create some really great characters and situations to work with that. So yeah, this was a backward story for me, probably the only book I can think of that I've written that began with a title. Well, the title is so cool. And I love how you interweave, you know, book clubs in there, because I know that's a real big part of the work that you do as well. Well, right. And it's so funny, you know, I, um, I have, of course, as all authors do, spoken to a lot of book clubs over the years. I mean, I've been published for, I think I'm trying to do, math is not my thing, but I think it's been about 24 years. So, you know, I've had lots of opportunity and and I love speaking to book groups. So I've done a lot of that, but I haven't belonged to a book club, frankly, since... um, probably since my first novel came out and our neighborhood book club discussed it and the conversation about the book lasted about 10 minutes and then we moved on. So I was like, that was sort of the end of it for me. So this was a whole new experience. And the book club in this story is a bit different than your usual suburban book group. Yeah. So why don't you share just a little bit about the, your new book with us? We don't want to get into any major details because, you know, of course people want to pick this up and read it for the summer. Yeah. I'm not, and I hope they will. Uh, In this case, I mean, I am drawn to writing about friendship, especially the kinds that get us through, you know, the toughest times and also interwoven journeys of self-discovery. So that's very much what this story is. Uh, I also think a lighter touch um, is a good thing. I think Mary Poppins had it right. You know, I think a spoonful of humor helps the harsh realities go down. So, so while I'm generally trying for, for some something deeper and, and, and emotional. Um, I'm, I'm decidedly with a light touch has always been my thing. Um, in this case, we have four women at the center of the story, uh, who belong to this group. Um, Jasmine is a top sports agent juggling a career in single motherhood. Judith is an empty nester who's questioning her marriage. Aaron and high school sweetheart and fiance develops a serious case of cold feet at a really inopportune time. And Sarah, who's the fourth of this group, her husband takes a job out of town and saddles Sarah with a difficult mother-in-law who has always thought that her son could have done a lot better. So while the group itself um, is more diverse. These are the women who are at the center of the story, um, the point of view characters whose whose journeys we follow the the most closely. So was it difficult writing these different lives because they're so intriguing? 
Well, you know, it's that's always the 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 challenge of, of what I write. Um, you know, it is a lot different than following one point of view character throughout. It's a, it is a different feeling and it's always a challenge to be honest, to try to do justice to each character's story and their development and to take them to a place that, that works given the scenario in question. So that's always the challenge for me is, is to make their journeys satisfying um, and to weave them together in a way that, that feels right. Does it also feel like they take a life of their own as you're writing them? Yes. Um, It's so interesting, you know, and I've written about this before. I actually often write um, authors and writer characters because they say, you know, to write what you know. And frankly, I feel I feel sorry for us at times. So I've often shared how brutal the business can be. Um, I've written a number of books that focus on writers in general. Oh, yes. Well, I was working my way toward the fact that I am what's known as a pantser, uh, as in I write by the seat of my pants. I do know authors who are far more organized. I have a very good friend who was an engineer in her former life, and she will lay out an entire book, you know, chapter by chapter, which character's point of view it is. I mean, she knows when she sits down exactly where she's going. I am the opposite of that. And when I first started writing and being published, um, I thought I could fix how I write, you know, that I could get more organized. I I know other authors who, you know, like they'll have color coded cards for each character so they can see how often that character appears and, and outlining. Oh my gosh, I tried that once. Uh, I spent three weeks outlining a book. It was the most horrible experience I've ever had. And when I actually started writing, it bore no resemblance whatsoever to all the things I had put down. So what I've learned about myself is that I need to to find a way to trust that I am going to get where I hope to go. And so, yes, all of the characters often surprise me, um, usually in good ways, in that they become far more than I had imagined when I began. So I know you talked about, you know, friendship being like a major theme in your book. Were there other major themes? Um, well, you know, I'm I'm really writing about relationships. Um, each of these characters is dealing with a very different version of that. Um, you know, so yes, friendship is always at the core. And, and I'll be honest, I'm not even sure why. Uh, it's just something I'm drawn to repeatedly, but also relationships. And, and also, typically, for example, in this book, uh, this is a very, as I said, a little bit more of an urban um, book club and, and also a more diverse group. And they, some characters are introduced as we go along. It's a little bit different, but it's always the, um, the women. I have to say that I am, I certainly identify with the most. I, I think females, frankly, are just the strongest beings on the planet. And uh, I think we, we, we grow, obviously, when things fall down around us, unfortunately, is when we discover who we really are and how strong we really are. And so that is a theme that, that I'm drawn to writing about repeatedly. The thing that was fun about this book club for me was I actually, you know, because I hadn't belonged to one in so long and and speaking to a group is different than belonging to a group. I joined a a book club run by actually a good friend of mine who was a bookseller when I first met her and um, has left that space, but still runs a book club that she began all that time ago. And it lives on meetups. So anyone can actually decide to come or join or show up. And so what happens is you, there's a lot of change that takes place. There are men involved in the group as well. Um, And, and very different people might come for a few weeks and not come for a while and then show up later, which I found really interesting. And, and that actually helped inform this particular group. It is it is more diverse, um, you know, than than one I've ever written before, or that I've actually visited before. So that was really fun too. That's so fun to create it the way you want, especially when you come up with the breakup book club as a title and inspiration for writing. Yes, and and also the thing was. 
you know, when you have a title like that, you don't necessarily want to start out with a whole bunch of broken up people, you know, who are, who are in the depths of despair and that sort of thing. So it was really, it was actually really interesting to see how to create the group itself. And in fact, um, I don't know if you've had a chance to read it yet, but you will notice when you read it that, in fact, that is not the name of the actual group. And a lot of time at meetings is spent trying to figure out what their name should be. That is too much fun. Too much fun. You know, I really love how you interwove the multi-generational you know, kind of aspect in this book. Was that important for you to do it that way? Well, yes, I think I just, you know, yes, I think when everyone is the same, uh, it becomes difficult to create interesting storylines to to form friendships that feel real. I think most of us in our lives are not only dealing with people who are exactly like us or who are exactly our age or or that sort of thing. And a number of years ago, uh, we we took a place in New York and lived there for a time. And afterward, we downsized from a suburban neighborhood out, you know, in in the Atlanta area to a high rise more in the city. And at that point in time, also the people I was exposed to all the time changed. I, you know, I was around people who hadn't raised their children in the same bubble that I had raised mine in. And I have found it really fascinating. And there are, for example, in the building where where I am, there are people of all ages and different ethnicities and lots of different backgrounds and that sort of thing, which I have really loved. Um, you know, I have have friends here who are considerably older than me, although that's not as easy as it used to be, and um, and people who are a lot younger. And I am just finding that really fascinating. And I think that's another reason why I wanted a book club where yeah, where there were lots of different kinds of people involved. Yeah, I understand what you mean when everyone starts looking really young, all of a sudden it's like, whoa. <laughs> you know what happened? Yeah, I know. I know. I just love how you brought all these voices to the table because everyone has such a different perspective, you know, and to come from all these different places, I think brings so much value to your book. Well, thank you. And, you know, this is the thing about fiction that, um, that I love is that you don't have to be X to write about X. I mean, you know, the whole concept is we are using our imaginations and, you know, honestly, I mean, you're creating people out of nothing except your imagination. So, you know, there's a lot of freedom there to, to do what you want and create the kind of people you want to. And at the same time, a lot of it comes out of obviously observation, you know, and watching how people relate to others and what takes place. I, you know, for me, I'm a very character driven writer, always have been. And so for me, that's what matters most. What I care about is who these people are, um, how they're going to grow, how they would interact with others, and the lessons that they're going to learn um, along the way. So, so you know, I, I have joked often in the past that it's, you know, sort of a, a real shame that, you know, that plot and conflict are required because I would be very happy just <laughs> writing scenes about people I like or I find interesting and that sort of thing. But um, fortunately for everyone, I have learned how to actually do all those other things as well. But, but, but for me, it's always begins with the characters and ends with them. Well, it sounds like you need a series is what you need. <laughs> <laughs> well, I've done, I've done one of those. In fact, um, the 10 Beach Road novels uh, were actually, I started with 10 Beach Road, wrote the book, thought I was done. I, as you can tell, I'm not a huge planner or I'm not thinking as ahead as, as one might. And I wrote that book and honestly thought I was done. You know, I thought I'd left everybody in a good place and and it was time to move on. And I actually um, was halfway through another book when I realized I wasn't done. And I was hearing from all these readers who wanted to know what happened next and what happened to those characters. And I ended up writing a, a six, six books and two novellas as part of that series that I had never intended to write. And I actually think this book, I'll be interested to hear what readers think, but I actually think think this 
this particular book and this particular group could really lend itself in many ways just because the core is is like i said more diverse and people do come and go you'll you'll notice when you read the book that it's not a set group and they're the only ones who come because new people are introduced on you know they come and go which which actually lends itself to lots of things Oh my goodness. You can take that in so many different directions. I I'm so curious to see what happens with that. Well, me too. Mm -hmm. (laughs) We will see. We will see. Well, and so why did you choose Atlanta as a hub for this backdrop? Well, I live here. And um, while I have not always set things here. I've done a few books that are either Atlanta based or a character began in Atlanta or that sort of thing. Um, I just, I don't know. I really thought this was the place. I also, because as I said, of how much my life had changed given where I lived, what my lifestyle was like and so on. I really felt like I had more to contribute to what it would feel like. And and honestly, it, it is, it is a really great city and there are people here from, you know, all over the world. This is, this is no longer a, you know, a, only a Southern town. So it just lent itself, I thought, in a lot of ways to the story. Um, Interestingly, to me anyway, um, I wrote a book a number of years ago called While We Were Watching Downton Abbey about a group of women brought together by weekly viewing parties of of the series. And I created this entire fictional high rise. It was in Midtown actually, and, you know, put people in it and wrote the story and all of that. And then, like I said, a number of years ago, we, we actually ended up moving into a building almost exactly like the fictional one that I created. So I don't know, sometimes I think things just happen for a reason and, and you use them use them and move forward. Well, yeah. And, <laughs> and yeah, I know we have a lot of listeners that are going, okay, I love to write. So how did she do it? Does she sit down all at once and it just pours from you? Or do you have certain times of the day that you write? Well, so here's the thing. Um, and I've actually been writing a number of blog posts and things that you know are targeted to, to people. So many people feel they have a story in them or that they would like to write. Um, frankly, it is it is a brutal experience. Um, I think a first book is a very different scenario in that you may have a story you've just been wanting to tell and you want to get it down and you have all the time in the world, you know, to do that. Uh, but, but the act of writing professionally, you know, that this is what you do, um, for a living is such a different experience. And I think that's kind of why I keep getting drawn to having writer characters in my stories. Uh, one of my earlier books was called the accidental bestseller, which is a story about four writers who are, who help each other survive the publishing industry. So if anyone wants to see what it actually feels like, you know, it is sort of before self-publishing and did, you know, digital became what it has become, but it is a bit, it, I, I, I said the names have been changed to protect the innocent, but it's about as real a look at what it is to be a working published writer as I could write. And actually, and while we were watching Downton Abbey, I also have a writer character um, and you see her journey and what is going on with her as well. My ex-best friend's wedding, which came out um, oh my gosh, I think was it last year, uh, also has two people who always wanted to write. One of them succeeds and becomes um, a very well-known writer. The other becomes a bookseller. So I I've, I've dealt with this theme a whole lot. I you know, you, you almost never meet someone who, who doesn't say, oh, you know, when I retire, I'm going to write a book, or I always wanted to write a book. I think it's something we just believe we can do if we choose. I would only say this. Um, it's anyone who has attempted it and or completed a novel will tell you just how hard it really is. Um, I love those stories about how, you know, every once in a while, although I get really jealous, the people you hear, oh, I sat down and it poured out of me. I didn't even have to think I, it was there. Um, wow. That is, that sounds so wonderful. That has not been my experience. (laughs) My experience is it takes an incredible amount of self-discipline to sit down and write on a daily basis. Um, I actually started writing uh, toward, you know, looking toward publication when I was at home with a two-year-old and a newborn, uh, which was 
one of the re- most ridiculous decisions I have ever made in my life. And I had no idea, you know, how long a journey it would be or what it would take or any of those things. Um, sort of chalk that up to post pregnancy hormones and lack of sleep. You know, I just really didn't realize <laughs> what I was undertaking and what it would be like. I, I think, you know, I learned when they were small. I sat when they when they find when they went to preschool and then they were in school, I sat down every day after they'd gone and I worked until they came home because the rest of the day was, you know, taken up with activities and meals and bedtime and all those other things. So, um, you know, writing to me is it's it's a it's it's this creative enterprise that we, you know, we sit down and and hope to to create something with, and at the same time, it takes an incredible amount of will and discipline, you know, to actually create something. That's my joke that, that people unrelated to you by birth would choose to read, you know, that's the thing. It's, (laughs) it's just hard. It's just really, really hard. Um, that reminds me, there was a song from, uh, I, I think it's called something rotten. It was a Broadway show and Shakespeare is in it. And he, there is a song in which he sings about how hard it is um, to, you know, to actually write something. And it just is, uh, you know, I feel incredibly fortunate to get to do this as my full-time um, thing and, and hearing from readers, you know, who really loved or enjoyed what you wrote or, you know, who share with you what it meant to them. That's just the most incredible feeling um, um, ever, but the I just have to say the act of writing, it's hard. And I, I I know a lot of writers, and very few of them after the first book or so, um, you know, are saying, "Oh, it just flowed. Everything was perfect. I, you know, it just came out of me. It just, you know, ah, it just sounds so negative, but it's it's harder than that." <laughs> <laughs> I always wonder if they're really telling the truth. You know, it's like it flowed out of me in two years, you know? <laughs> so. Right. Well, well, good point. You know, it's sort of that, like the grass is always green. You know, I, I used to think that everyone else, it was so much easier for them. And it was just me that it was so difficult for. And then, but then I, I, you know, got to know writers. I have two critique partners I've been critiquing with for, you know, a couple of decades now. Um, you know, once you see what it takes you understand, you know, it, it really good books just look easy because they're really well written. And so you don't see the effort that went into them. You don't see what it took, you know, to get the words to, to flow quote unquote, or like I write humor. Um, so for me, knowing if something's funny or not, that's part of what I rely on my critique partners for, because once you've spent a lot of time, on your language and sort of trying to manipulate it. So the humor is clear. You really don't know anymore if it's funny or not. So getting that feedback for me can make a very large difference, but you know, it's a, it's a large undertaking to, to write a novel, especially, I mean, and, and create something that other people want to sink into and, and will enjoy. So it's always a challenge, but yes, I, I, I think other people's books just look easy because I haven't been sitting there while they've been making them happen. Um, you know, <laughs> I know that for a fact. <laughs> I don't know anybody who doesn't have to think their way through it. So. Oh my gosh. I know, especially with the flow of your book, like it is, I have heard countless times how people have picked up your book and read it, you know, read it cover cover and they love it. You know, and it, it's just so nice when you hear those kind of things because it really says that you've done so much work to make it the way it is supposed to be. We have that beautiful flow. Well, thank you. And yes, I mean, that's what, you know, I am trying to deliver the kind of experience that I love as a reader. And of course, there are no writers who did not begin as voracious readers. That's just true. And, um, you know, for me, I can tell when I, pick up a book, um, I can tell in the first few paragraphs if I'm going to get sucked in and, and, and enjoy myself or not. And I am, I mean, I'll be honest, you can probably tell from what I write. I am an escape reader. I, 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 I can respect and appreciate books that are darker and, you know, and, and go in different ways. But when I'm looking to relax or I'm looking to forget about things, or I'm just looking to go somewhere else, I just, I don't want to have to think too hard. You know, I want to just 
I want to feel the book, not necessarily analyze the book. Um, but that's me. You know, I, I always, I feel great when, when I hear from people who say, you know, I went through this really difficult time and, you know, reading your, reading one of your books, you know, really helped me get through it, or I could escape into it. Um, those are the kinds of experiences that I am looking for as a reader. And while I admire all kinds of, of books and, and writers who can create incredible things. Um, I'm, I'm looking for escape in almost every situation. Oh my gosh. I look for the same thing too. And I read a book, I want to be able just to melt into it and just spend the day reading and not even think Mm -hmm. about anything else. (laughs) Oh yeah. Oh yeah. That's the, I mean, that is truly the best feeling in the world, you know, starting something new and that, you know, you're going to enjoy it's uh, anyway. Yes. Books are, books are wonderful. I have to say. (laughs) Oh yeah. Yeah. Well, and do you have something else? I mean, you're just getting this book out and it's making such great reviews and everyone loves it. Are you thinking about another book or are you taking a little break? Yeah. I mean, you know, normally I would already be in the midst of the next, a next book. And originally I thought I would be doing another 10 Beach Road novel right now, but um, I, I think I'd mentioned, and, and I know some, some of my readers know this already. My, uh, my husband um, died from COVID in August. And so um, I, uh, and, yeah, sorry. I'm, I'm taking a little time off because I need to regroup. So, so I am I'm hoping, you know, to help this book out into the world and talk to people about it. And I, I hope people will read and enjoy it. And then I'm just going to, um, I don't know what I'm going to do, to be honest, but I'm going to, to um, try to relax and regroup and gather my brain cells back again. And, uh, and then I'll see. Well, I'm so sorry for your loss. Yeah. I mean, and I know that people are just loving your book and spending time with you and your readers just absolutely adore you, you know, and it's all the other books that you've written are just absolutely fabulous. Well, and thank I know you. That's, that's oh sweet. my gosh, they're amazing. <laughs> oh, thank you. Thank so, you. Boy, you're, <laughs> this feels really nice. I should record this. I can listen back. <laughs> Good. <laughs> well, Wendy, where can our listeners connect with you and be part of your community and learn more about your work? Well, you know, I'm on Facebook. It's, um, you know, and I have a website and all of all of the usual things. I will just say this. When you're looking for me, it's authorwendywax.com. Um, if you if you go on, you'll also be able to see all the books I've written, read excerpts, um, you know, just take a look all around. Well, Wendy, thank you so much for taking the time to be on the show with us here today. Oh, thanks so much for having me. I really appreciate it. Well, thank you, Wendy. It has been such an honor to spend this time with you and to talk about your new novel, The Breakup Book Club. The Breakup Book Club is available at Amazon, Barnes & Noble, and all indie retailers, and it makes the perfect summer read. Again, if you like to connect with Wendy, you can at wendywax.com for more information, and her book's also available on Kindle. Well, we're at the end of our time today. I would like to thank everyone for tuning in. You're listening to Moments with Marianne. And remember, make every moment count. In a single moment, your life can change. Moments with Marianne is a transformative hour that covers an endless array of topics with the best of the best. Her guests are leaders in their fields, ranging from inspirational authors, top industry leaders, and business and spiritual entrepreneurs. Each guest is gifted and a true visionary. A recognized leader in her own work, and while teaching others to develop, refocus, and grow, Marianne will bring the best guest and sometimes a special surprise. Don't miss this. You never know just which moment will change your life forever. Moments with Marianne airs every Sunday, Monday, Thursday, and Friday at 8 p.m. Eastern and 5 p.m. Pacific Time. Make sure to tune in and visit MomentsWithMarianne.com for more information. 